Hello everyone and welcome to another Flux tutorial. My name is Zach Peterson and today I'm going to run over the parts update feature inside the Flux platform. Now I think the parts update feature is one of the much cooler features that exists inside the Flux platform. Other applications can do this type of part updating automatically. It's just that it is a managed add-on and it's kind of expensive and of course it's only for that particular application. The parts update feature feature inside Flux is native to the platform and it's a great way to automatically get updates to your parts especially when those parts or sub layouts are owned by another Flux user. So I'm going to show you how to access this and how to use it and what to watch for if you then apply updates to the parts in your project. So make sure to hop onto the Flux platform and get into your own project, follow along. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, sometimes when you open up one of your projects and you get into the editor, once the project loads, you may see a notification in the lower portion of the screen. And that notification is shown right here. And so you can see that it says updates are available for your parts. And you have the option to dismiss this or review it. Now, this is telling you that somebody who owns the project data for each of these elements that is inside of this project has made updates to those parts and those have been published to the library. Now you can of course click dismiss to just ignore it and none of the data that is in your project will end up changing and you can go on about your business working on your design making modifications or anything like that. But the important point to note here is that this data that appears in your specific project will remain the same. It will not change if you click dismiss or if you just ignore this and everything that you see in your project will continue to work as it did before you opened it. Now, let's say we click the review button. If we click the review button here, you'll see that the list of uh, either sub layouts or parts in your project um, we'll come up here and there will be a option to update or apply the updates uh, to this sub layout. So what this is telling you is that uh, this particular uh, sub layout, this USB-C receptacle with the built-in ESD pr protection, um, this was updated by the original user. And if we want, we could then apply this. Now, if you click over here to all, you will then see a list of all of the parts or the sub layouts that appear in your project. And then this is going to tell you um, if there's anything else that has uh, been changed. Now, of course, none of these have been changed. This is the only change that's been applied here. So that is what this dialog is showing you. Now, of course, you could access this dialog from the main menu. To do that, you just click the main menu button, go to parts updates, and then you will see here we have the same dialog that comes up. So if I click the update button, what the system is going to do is automatically update the part. And the updates could mean a number of different things. It could mean that pins are added or removed. It could mean that the pin uh, arrangement has changed. It could mean something in the PCB layout for that particular sub layout has changed. So just as an example, you know, if I open up this sub layout and we then let it load, um, we can see here that um, we've got a lot of stuff that we haven't finished designing. Um, but here we actually have the, uh, the uh, USB-C receptacle with the ESD protection. And so that sub layout is right here. And so just by looking at it um, without comparing the old and the new version side by side, uh, you may not know in immediately what has been updated. Um, but the important point here is that if these updates get applied to your project, then it's a good idea to go through and check everything to make sure that the connections that you had in the previous version of the project are also present in the new version of the project. So you'll need to go through and do a design review to make sure that none of the connections got swapped or eliminated and that you are using any new connections that may have been added into your sub layout or into one of these parts. Now, if I go back here into the schematic and I go into the change history window, I'll be able to see where those uh, instances of parts synchronization occurred as I go through and look through this list. So you can already see here that right here is the instance 
where these parts were synchronized with all of the parts that are available in the public library. So this is the instance where we essentially applied all of those parts updates. Now if I want to, I could of course roll back to an earlier version and I could go back as far as I want as long as there's version control history. But if I just click through here and restore this version, what it's going to do is it will restore the project to the state that it was in before those parts updates were applied. And so if you go up here and then look at, let's say, parts updates, what it's going to do is it'll bring up this window again, and you can see that the part update appears here again. So that's because we rolled back the project to the pre-update status, and then we can see that list of updates again. So this gives you a way to essentially undo any of those parts updates that may have been applied, and maybe they didn't work for your project, or maybe you would have done it differently, or maybe it messed up enough of the layout that it just made sense to go back and roll back to that earlier version before the parts updates were applied. So again, make sure that you do this kind of review and check to see if those updates are going to be appropriate for your project. You can make use of the version control system to undo any of that and go back to a previous state. So let's just suppose that I'm working on a sub layout that I have published to the parts library. And let's suppose I make some changes to that sub layout. So how exactly do those changes get over to other users who will then be notified that there are updates available? Well, what you have to do is publish any of those changes to the parts library. So just as an example, we have here a sub layout, which I have forked from a different project. And if someone were using this sub layout in their own project, and then I were to say make a change to this particular project, those changes will not be available to update in another project until I actually publish them to the library. So let's just suppose I add in uh, some changes here and I finish this up. The only way anyone is going to be able to apply these in their particular project is I as the project owner have to go up here to the main menu, I have to click publish changes and of course go through the publishing process. So only after that happens will another user receive that alert when they open up a project that contains this sub layout. Now similarly if I had taken all of these changes and then published this to the parts library and then let's suppose I go up here to the change history and I roll back some of those changes. So I roll this back to an earlier state and then I publish those changes again. Once again, that's the only way that someone who is using this sub layout is going to be able to see any of those changes and then apply them in their project. So the owner of that sub layout or that part has to actively publish any of the changes that they have made in order for you as another user to then implement any of those updates in your own project. So if you're collaborating with somebody and you're using one of their sub layouts and they make a change to that sub layout, they have to push all of that uh, into the library in order for you to take advantage of any of those changes. So keep that in mind if you're collaborating with anybody because those changes always have to be published to be accessible. Now I'm taking a short detour here just to show one thing that you can do with parts updates. So I've opened this other project and then you can see here that we have updates available for these parts. Now when I click review, of course it brings up the dialog and you'll notice here that it lists the two uh, components in this project that have uh, updated data. Now one thing that I can do to ensure that I always automatically receive this data and keep my parts up to date is I can enable the receive latest drafts option. So right here, if I click receive latest drafts, it's going to automatically keep the part up to date with the latest changes. So it's always going to update the part. Now, if I do this, anything that is changed in that part is going to update in this project. So you want to make sure that those parts are trusted sources. So you should do this if, say, you're managing your own parts or if you have a team member that's managing parts for you. Both are appropriate. Now, if you ever want to undo that option, just go up to the top menu, click parts updates, and 
go over here to the All tab. And under the All tab, you'll see a list of all components that are in the project. And here you can toggle Receive Latest Drafts for each of the parts individually. So this is a great way to ensure that if you or a teammate are managing your components, that any modifications to those components are automatically applied in all of the projects where those components are being used. So one of the reasons I think this is so cool is because it gives you some measure of control while also enabling collaboration with others. And it's in a very easy to use interface. So like I said earlier, normally with other design software, you would have to get like a managed server or a managed system to be able to implement these updates and then automatically apply them to your files. Flux does all of this stuff automatically behind the scenes, and then it gives you a very simple way to be able to import those changes into the parts in your particular design or your project. Okay, everyone, so thanks for tuning in to this uh, tutorial. Um, there are some other tutorials that are linked in the description on the version control system, and make sure to check those out, and of course, follow along. And last but not least, subscribe to all of our updates, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.